Thanks for tuning in again to this episode of The Field Guide Okanagan. My name is Taryn Lee Parker, and I'm here with my cousin, Lisa Beeson of Wanderlust Stuff. So, Lisa. Hi, Hi. Hi, Hi Lisa. <laughs> so nice. So, uh, originally, where are you from, Lisa? Edmonton, Alberta. One of the many expats who've made their way here. <laughs> We moved here 15 years ago. Right. So how did you decide to move to the Okanagan? We wanted to. It was just a destination that we knew we wanted to live in. We came here on vacation and I was just ooing and aahing and I went, I just knew. I just yeah. knew this is where we wanted to be. So yeah, it we just made the move. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Look around. <laughs> Look around. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So tell us, like, what is, what is Wanderlust stuff? That's what we're here for today. Okay. Well, on the most basic level... Wanderlust Stuff is an e-commerce travel store, but what differentiates us from the majority of travel stores out there is that um, my focus is on independent makers creating products that are good for the world. So the whole concept is to sort of you know help people see the world and showcase makers from around the world that are doing good for the world. So um, it's really about cre creating collections of super unique, sustainable travel products. Beautiful. So how did you actually, like, where did you decide to, to start Wanderlust stuff? It was born out of COVID, believe it or not. Um, I was a flight attendant for 14 years, as you know, and I was laid off with tens of thousands of others in the aviation industry over COVID. And um, I woke up one random morning on a Sunday and I was just missing travel and the idea came to me and um, I knew I'd found my new thing. That's so cool. So, I mean, how would you, uh, how did you actually go about starting it up? Like that, that I can't even imagine where you start. Well, um, yes, it was, it was quite, it's been quite the journey. Um, so I had a lot of, you know, um, experience prior to um, in marketing and website design and social media. And I was doing that sort of work as a sideline um, hustle um, while I was a flight attendant and helping my husband's business. And um, so when I decided to get started with this, I, I felt really confident in those particular areas. But I knew that the e-commerce actual side of things and the, like the real digital marketing side mm -hmm. of things was an area that I could have used some help with. So Long story short, I ended up getting a random email um, from Economic Development Okanagan that, uh, you know, just one of their newsletters, and they said that um, there was an organization called uh, Accelerate Okanagan that was um, interviewing companies um, to be in this acceleration program um, for tech businesses. So I went, okay, well, how hard can that be? <laughs> Right. right, right. So I put an application in and I thought, oh, okay, just a quick little, you know, application. Well, that turned into interview after interview after practice pitches after having to do like an actual pitch over Zoom to like, like a Dragon's Den style thing to like 10 of these people <laughs> I'd never met before that were all very successful tech entrepreneurs. Anyways, yeah. long story short, they were only selecting 10 companies to be in this program. I was one of the ones that was selected. And then I proceeded to go through six, well, eight months oh of um, insane learning. I feel like I got like a mini MBA in about a six month time. And I really set the foundation of the business for me. So Right. So how, like... What drives you to do what you do? Like, what drove? What drives you to keep going and yeah. continue wanderlust stuff? <laughs> well, um, I can just say the digital landscape, the digital space is for a fifty-some-year-old um, is a lot of learning. Um, so there are days where it just seems so overwhelming. I mean, why not just you know open a, a bricks and mortar store somewhere? But um, <laughs> so on those bad days, I remember why I started doing this, and it was it really sort of was born from when I was a flight attendant, and I never really traveled a lot before I was a flight attendant, but. Once I started the job, I got hooked on travel and yeah. I just fell in love with everything. The cities, the beaches, the architecture, the cafes, the libraries, the restaurants, the hotels, the landmarks. And it really gave me a profound appreciation for our world and the cultures in it. It made me, yeah. travel made me a better human. And it's those things that I still hold on to. It's my passion. I could talk about travel and places <laughs> all day long and never be tired of it. So it's those things that pull me out of my yeah. my, my tough days for sure. It really felt natural when, when you announced this and came out with it. Cause I mean, as your friend and your cousin, I've been following you personally through your whole journey as a flight attendant. And I always like, you know, it, your way of posting on your 
on Instagram was always like, wow, she is so captivated and in love with this. It really, it was moving. So Thank you. Yeah. I can totally get why this happened. <laughs> right. Yeah. It was, yeah. It, even though it was an idea that just sort of came out of nowhere on a random Sunday morning, it was also just part of a, a love I had for what I was doing. And it, it brought together even my, my past history, you know, in marketing or my love for travel, it brought everything together into one place for yeah. me. So yeah, I yeah. feel that. It's destiny. Yes. <laughs> some days, though. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's see some of your products. Sure. So I brought a couple things to show. Um, now a lot of my stuff is a lot of my stuff <laughs> is one of a kind. Um, um, my products are either they're all by independent makers. Um, they're either sustainably made, ethically sourced, providing jobs to artisans in developing countries, or they donate back to Earth or charity. So those are sort of the things I really look for when I decide to bring something into um, my, my collections. Um, I find that those brand values are very important to, you know, that appreciation for the world that we talked about. So yeah. Um, these are some fun fun things. So this bag here, um, I have a series of these. Uh, this, these I, I actually um, get made in Morocco. Um, so these are, um, recycled Moroccan kilns or carpets. Um, and literally the maker and I, um, go over WhatsApp and zoom and he literally lays out carpets on the floor for me. And we look at the carpets and we pick ah. the matching leathers yeah. and then he has them made in villages in the Atlas mountains by the Berber people communities. And then he ships them right here to me in Kelowna. So every bag's a one of a kind. Um, I've got this size, I've got a larger one as well. Um, and they will last you a lifetime. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful leather. The inside has an African motif inside. Um, and they're super functional and super sturdy for travel. Cool. That's just one. Um, another one that's kind of fun. These are super fun. Um, so this is actually a Canadian maker that I carry, and he creates really, um, really structured bags out of recycled seat belts that are from um, pulled from junkyards and old yeah. aircrafts and stuff. It's even like super fun. Like look at that. Mm -hmm. That's like that I love. I'm so in love with that. It's detail. a Cadillac. It's an old Cadillac, and I just love that yes. sound. It reminds oh, me of totally. my, my dad in the 70s. Going, it reminds Buckle me up. of Noni. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so this maker here, we, we work together in customizing, you know, the bags. Again, these are all one of a kinds. There's no two that are ever the same, yeah. right? Because of the, uh, the, the seat belts and they're just, they're, they're really structured. This will last you forever, like yeah, forever and forever, forever. last you longer no than you'll be around. Um, so I carry a whole series of different bags from this maker and we work together to, to make different designs that are going to appeal to yeah. my customer, which is mainly female to, yeah. you know, to be honest. Um, so there's that. I'll put that there. And then here's another. So this is a um, this is a Ooh. this is a product oh. I actually um, import from India. So these are all hand beaded. Like if you look at the yeah, that's intricacy incredible. of the work, um, it's unbelievable. So these are hand beaded in India by a family that's been in the textiles industry for like three generations, and entire villages make fair wages, and their children get scholarships and educations just by the making of these bags. And all the other materials are recycled as well. A uh, great beach bag. Um, Everyday tote, and I have a yeah. whole bunch of different ones um, on my website as well. Very, you know, just just a ton yeah. of different styles. So there's that guy, um, and this one too is like my newest, funnest. Oh, I got it bent way down. Oh yeah, my I can't help but love this funnest one. that that <laughs> I had actually made. Um, so the gal that creates these bags is in New England. Uh, in the United States, and she still hand sews. She hand sews everything. Yeah. This is all hand handmade. This is recycled utility canvas. Um, I started by buying her bags that said Escape and yeah. Beach and Road Trip on it, and then we collaborated, and now we're doing a series that say Okanagan on it, and I've got them in a variety of different colors, and these are really big on the inside. Um, four days of clothes, easy, nice little weekend trip. Nice. And like I said, hand, you know, all the letters yeah. still hand, hand sewn and everything, so... Those are just some examples of uh, yeah some of the that some of the fun bags. That is beautiful like stuff. Thank you. Yeah, Thank amazing. You. So what? Let's uh, let's just <clears throat> tell me more about. I know you have a really incredible collection of like it's all travel per like really travel specific. Yeah, it's very travel themed. So yeah, I mean those are bags, sure, but I also carry stuff like flight food. Yeah, which is actually um, a travel wellness um drink powder that you actually put in your water bottle when you travel yeah and it's proven to help with everything from hydration to jet lag um yeah, yeah. you know nausea when you fly there's so many different trust me um there's so many <laughs> different negative impacts on your body when you fly yeah. um so this gal who actually was a flight attendant as well designed this product and i have a ton of travel agents using it who just swear by it like yeah. you literally drink these on a four to eight hour flight and you get to where you're going feeling wonderful. So I have things like that. I have things like these, which are um, 
These are personal body alarms. I love the gold. Yeah, they're really nice. So you can put that on your bag or your purse or whatever yeah. when you're walking. And if you ever feel threatened, um, you simply just pull this out and it emits a 300 and, or sorry, 136 decibel chirp and a very bright light. And it's just, you know, it's a peace of mind. Yeah. It's just a little peace of mind if you're solo. I, I mean, yeah. I did it so I'm, much solo yeah. traveling when I was a flight attendant and I'd be walking cities by myself. I wish I'm I had them one. then. Um, so I'm carrying these yeah. as well for the, the female traveler. So just kind of like I'm a little bit all over the place with stuff. But these are all really unique products by but independent makers that are really cool. Yeah. Right. The last one I'll show you is this one here. So this is called Hideaway. This is all made with recycled plastic. This is a case that has the world on it, yeah, yeah. which I love. And inside of it is a collapsible water bottle also made out of recycled plastics that you quite simply just open, expand, sweet, drink out of. Love Release, it. back in she goes, and clip it onto your, your and doesn't take up any space, and you clip it onto your bag. So yeah. there, just some yeah. some of the things, yeah. unique right. things that, I, that I've that i got. That's amazing. Cool. Thanks. So what would you say your customers love most about your products? I, th I think the stories. I think that they really love the story behind the maker. I spend a lot of time on my website talking about who these people are and why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. Um and I think the stories behind, you know, where they're made and who's making them and that um, people really love that. They, they, they like that conscientious aspect to their shopping. Yeah. They feel like they're making a difference, even if it's in the smallest way. Yeah. You know? I know that's what I love. Like, instantly. Like, you go to the place and it opens Wanderlust. That's what it starts. It gets it going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So what would you say is, like... The, like Lisa, what's the biggest surprise that's come from starting this business? Oh my God, the work, <laughs> <laughs> the work, um, and doing so much digitally. Like as a yeah. you know, as somebody who's like I said, you know, in mid fifties, self taught at this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm very savvy. I'm very tech savvy. I'm very fast. But there's so much to learn as somebody who's, you know, not a millennial who did grow up with computers. And there's just, you know, I'm working in like 11 different platforms, tech platforms a day. Yeah. And just learning them all and everything's so robust and, and, and they're all so complex. And that's been the hardest part. But you know what? It makes you a lifelong learner. Yeah. So. So as a world traveler, what would you say you love most about the place we're at right now? Like, what oh. do you love most about the Okanagan? Um, there's nothing I don't love. I mean, like I said, we moved here because this is the destination we wanted to live out the rest of our lives yeah. in. And for me, it's just like, it's the geography, it's the topography, it's the landscape, it's the mountains, it's the lake, it's the beaches, it's the vineyards, <laughs> it's the apple trees. You know, there's just... I mean, what's not amazing about it? Yeah. Right? Um, and I mean, there's there's a really wonderful, uh, of course, wine culture here and a wine community. There's an amazing culinary culture. Like some of the restaurants and stuff are incredible. And there's a really good entrepreneur and tech culture here too. So yeah, um, it's a really unique place to live. I'm very, yeah. I feel very grateful. Yeah. That's so cool. So what do you like to do besides work, Lisa? <laughs> um, Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I, I, I like going to wineries. Um, I actually, I just, I love exploring the region everywhere from, you know, down to Asoyas all the way up to, you know, Salmon Arm in the, in the, and the, uh, in the Sycamus area. Um, I love exploring the area as if, um, as if I was exploring when I was still a flight attendant and going to different yeah. cities. So that's my favorite thing I think to do. Yeah. There's so much to see. Yeah. Still after 15 years. There's so much I haven't seen. Right? So, I know. Yeah. Even just driving here today, I was like, wow, I haven't been to the West Side enough lately. <laughs> We're at Friend, by the way. Friend Winery. Yes. Yes. And the only beach winery in North America. Yeah. It's pretty outstanding. It's pretty cool. Um, so... Being that we're on the field guide right now and everybody knows I really love food and wine, what are your favorite, what's your favorite restaurant? I can't say I have just one. Yeah. I have a few. Um, and they're kind of all over. Um, <laughs> I love the restaurant at um, 50th Parallel. Um, been there for birthday celebrations, mainly birthdays. Like we go yeah, for birthday. It's yeah, kind of like our location. place to go for our birthdays <laughs> and stuff. And I mean, the food's always just so spectacular. There's one dessert on there I've never been so happy to have in my entire life is the dessert I had. I think yeah. it was called popcorn. I know. Oh, oh my oh, God. I know that. Oh I know my God. That to die for. Um, so that's oh. definitely one of my favorite restaurants. Um, over on this side of town, um, I would say Modest Butcher um, at the Mount Boucherie Winery. Yeah. Uh, super awesome steaks yeah. and stuff like that. Um 
And then downtown, there's just, there's so many great places. Like, I, we just went to the grand opening of the new Erica Jane restaurant downtown that opened yes. like Wednesday. We went to literally. The, yeah, it was literally, like two days a ago. A couple of days ago. And I mean, we had dinner and it was only my first time there, but it was spectacular. Like, yeah, it was, it I was so it. great. So, yeah. There's I, just so many to pick from around here and they're also good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, Lisa, where can we find Wanderlust stuff? Uh, pretty easy. Uh, www.wanderlessstuff.com <laughs> on the web. Of course, I've got, you know, Facebook and Instagram and yeah. all of that stuff, I'll too. I'll hook that stuff up to this. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, the cool. majority of um, the way that I expose my products is through social media. So um, yeah. you can obviously go on the website and browse and purchase. But uh, when I'm doing exposure on the brands and I'm talking about the makers behind things, that's usually done on social media. Yeah. So. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Lisa. So, thank you. Um, thanks, everyone. And we're just going to finish off this bottle of wine. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>